Brown. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our first meeting from, for the year 2022, January the 17th, monthly council meeting. We have, uh, I'd like to welcome Deputy Mayor McCollman and all of the city councillors. We also have our CAO, Rob Philpott, with us, and our Director of Finance, Kristen Dunsford, is with us, and we have Brian Harlick from Human Resources running the controls. Welcome as well to all viewers on YouTube watching our meeting tonight, and also welcome members of the media. So is there a motion to approve the agenda? Yes. Moved by Councillor Adams and seconded by Councillor Snow. All in favor? Aye. Audrey Nay? Carried. Thank you very much. Okay, well, any conflict of interest declarations? I uh, do not see any lights on. Okay, uh, what about the minutes for the approval of the monthly council meeting minutes December 20, 21? The last meeting for last calendar year. Moved by uh, Councilor McDougall and seconded by uh, Councilor McFeely. Any questions? All in favor say aye. aye. Contrary nay, carried. Correspondence, well, we all know that December was very busy with invitations and Christmas receptions and, and all of those kinds of things. And uh, so I'm not gonna get into reading all of those, but it was a very, very busy month with the Christmas, uh, besides the meetings, but with the Christmas receptions and, and, and that sort of thing. So uh, I'm not gonna take a whole lot of time other than uh, we hoped everybody had a very Merry Christmas and uh, a Happy New Year. And we look forward to uh, 2022. It's gonna be a very interesting year. 2021 is probably, or no doubt, being the busiest year ever for me, and I've been around a couple of weeks, and I think all of these councillors as, as well have been found it very, very busy, which was great. So, we'll, the first item on the agenda is the financial services report. Deputy Mayor, the floor is yours, Councillor, or Deputy Mayor McCollman. Thank you, Your Worship, and good evening to members, colleagues uh, of council and uh, senior management. Um, I'd like to uh, present the report this evening to the businesses and residents of the City of Summerside and thank you to Director Kristen Dunsford who has prepared this monthly report. The uh, monthly uh, committee or the, the finance committee did meet and I'm happy just to present the information to you as a result of the past month. The preparation of our 2022-2023 capital and operating budgets is well underway and will be presented to residents on Wednesday, March the 9th at 6.30 p.m. Council will vote on this budget on Thursday, March 31st, 2022. Our latest projection for our current fiscal year is reporting a surplus of $100,411, which is mainly due to operating results of our electric utility. We continue to review our projections with the individ individual departments. And now for an update on the status of our utility accounts receivable. As of January 10th, 2022, the following is being reported through the department. Total overdue balance is $178,700 compared to $145,800 at December 9th, 2021. Approximately 6% or in the dollar amount of $10,700 of the overdue balance is greater than 60 days old, and this compares to 3.4% or $5,100 at December 9th, 2021. We are encouraging customers who have outstanding utility bills and have not requested a payment arrangement to contact financial services at 902-432-1230. Collections notices are being mailed out and customers are being reminded to address these notices as they are received. A reminder to our utility customers that we have a customer portal where you can review your account details, access your utility bills, and make payments by credit card or Visa debit. Please see our website at www.summerside.ca and click on My Utilities in the top right-hand corner to access this portal. Or, if you wish, you can contact us at 902-432-1230, and we can send you an invitation to create your account. 
I'd like to thank you for the opportunity to present this report and either myself or the Chief Financial Officer, Director Kristen Dunsford, are available to take your questions. And also uh, to members, uh, colleagues, just in your package of information, there is also a detailed uh, outline projection by fund as of November 30th, uh, 2021, just to give you a background on the general fund and the utilities fund and sources of revenue and expenses. So that concludes my report. I also have a resolution, Your Worship, and one more little promotion to do. Okay, I do not see any lights for questions. You go ahead with the resolution. Thank you. This resolution is COS 22-001, moved by myself, Deputy Mayor Norma McCollman, seconded by Councillor Brian McFeely, whereas the Infrastructure Secretariat with the province of Prince Edward Island requires a council resolution to allot Canada Community Building Fund, previously known as Direct Allocation Gas Tax Funds, and whereas the City of Summerside can request that these funds be transferred to a different project or a project be withdrawn. Be it resolved that Council approves the request to re withdraw Project 22-5-9, Restructure Greenwood Drive and Pope Road Intersection from the allocation of Canada Community Building Funding. These funds were reallocated to the paving project. Moved by Deputy Mayor McCollman and seconded by Councillor McFeely. Any questions on the resolution? I, Councillor Adams? I just have one question, um, Your Worship. Just when um, Deputy Mayor, the reallocated to the paving project, that was a paving project for the Greenwood Pope Roundabout? Yes. Is that the paving project that? No, it'd be our regular um, collector in local streets. Oh, okay. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Any further questions? All in favor say aye. 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 Contrary nay. Motion carried. Thank, Thank you. you. And just one last quick promotion. Um, as finance chair and liaison with the uh, Summerside Area and Christian Council, uh, I just uh, wanted to make a public announcement of the upcoming coldest night of the year. It's cold out there on February 22nd, 2022. And uh, there will be a walk in Summerside and it's in support uh, of hunger, hurt, uh, transition housing and shelter uh, and homelessness in our community and it will be in support of Lifehouse this year in Summerside to assist women and children in the transitional housing and shelter and the city of Summerside has received a information package to uh, request uh, the city with an investment on becoming a lead sponsor or supporting supporting sponsor to to this important event in our community that will support Summerside and all of Prince County. Secondly, registering a team, uh, mayor and council, and recruiting a city team of 10 staff members to walk and raise funds with the coldest night of the year. Now there's a number of details and uh, each council member will receive your letter in your mailbox tomorrow. And um, as chairs of various committees on council, um, I'm asking Councillor Corey and uh, with the community services, Councillor Barb with the emergency preparedness and Councillor Carey uh, with the human resources and legal affairs that if we do try to look at sponsoring a team or if there's anything in the various departments that you're chair of that maybe you could help liaison the information to anybody that would ask you and uh, we'll be putting this on our finance committee to discuss this week. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So that date and time again is February 22? Yes, February 22nd. And what time? You go walk uh, and where is it? Councillor Corey will be February 26th. 26th. Yeah. So it's not the end. February 26th, 22. Yes. So where? Thank, my apologies, you're right. Sorry, the, thank where's you. Where's the gathering for the walk? Uh, I think they're still confirming the walk, but it's probably most likely going to be in the Lifehouse area starting. The, the details will uh, definitely be coming out uh, further with the where they're starting from and so, so on. So it'll be the day or the evening? Or? Uh, it's it's an evening, yeah. Evening. yeah. It's the coldest night of the year, so they do it during the night. Okay. But uh, uh, just so everybody knows, I already uh, have a team uh, in, uh, me and my family, and I would encourage 
other counselors or counselors could get together and either put in a team or send some money my way to support my team. So uh, either or. Thank you. And I think the city, my feeling is the city should be in the sponsorship some way, shape, or form. So that will be discussed at finance. Yeah. We'll have that on finance. Because we had so many meetings and discussions about this great project, and I think it's important that the city support it that way too. So, and members and of council, you will get a copy. I just didn't, uh, ran out of paper in the copy room. <laughs> so where does the money forwarded to? Who's the treasurer of the organization or how is it uh, set up that way? Pardon? There, there is a, there's an online uh, registration portal. Uh, so uh, it's Project CNR. made out to Lifehouse, is it? Yeah, it, it, all the funds uh, get directed to Lifehouse. So they have a, a goal, I think, of 30,000 and uh, they're on their way to raise funds to do that. So, um, but it, it, anybody can go on and they can do it great online, make a donation so it goes right in. So, so it seems going to be a great project. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Do you have anything further to add no, on that? Okay, thank you. Okay, we'll continue on. Uh, Councillor Duran, how are things in tech services? Things are fantastic. Pretty historic year last year in the uh, in the tech services department uh, and uh, I'd like to note that it's good to be back up in the agenda for the second month in a row right after finance we were kind of down there underneath municipal services for a while I think but we're, we're back up there feels good to be up here earlier in the night before we start uh, dozing off a bit um, we closed out 2021 construction season but a number of projects are uh, going to continue throughout the winter uh, staff are working on the 2022 capital budget items while wrapping up the paperwork from this year's projects. Uh, permitting did not slow down for uh, the month of December at all. We issued uh, 20 building permits for a year-to-date total of 261 uh, with a total value for December uh, at 20.6 million. And that brings the uh, year-to-date total uh, up way up to $73.7 million. Uh, December permits issued, uh, there were 60, uh, excuse me, there was a 60 unit apartment building, uh, one mini home placement, seven single family homes, one renovation and change of use, and we also had four permits for demolition and signage, and four semi-detached units. This month we also issued a permit for a commercial addition. Previously our yearly average had been around 27 million dollars. <coughs> And this year we had $20 million just in December alone. Uh, we had topped $40 million four times previously in the last 15 years. So this year's total of 73 million is a dramatic increase from any previous year. It's a great sign of growth in our city. Developers are still stopping in and speaking to staff for assistance with their proposed projects as well as planning for next year. Uh, and now is a great time to prepare those projects that you're thinking about for 2022 um, so we're encouraging everyone to ask for assistance with those projects that they may have planned for uh, for this year. And uh, that concludes the report for technical services. And uh, I'd like to thank Aaron McDonald, the director, for preparing that for this evening. Thank you, uh, Councillor Drawn. Any questions for the chair of tech services? I, uh, just, Councillor Ramsey. Well, just that's a tremendous amount of development. Um, for uh, Summerside for this year, so I, you know, wow, I'm just really impressed with that with that uh, high number. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Ramsey, and uh, as well, you know, that's well over a hundred million dollars in the last year and a half, basically, yeah. and uh, that has never happened before in Summerside. And next year or this year, presently we're in, it looks like it's going to be another banner year. So uh, we. Uh, it's been, uh, it's our responsibility here, it's our philosophy has been, and I'm saying ours, not mine, but even though I'm part of it, uh, is to make our area attractive for development. And uh, when you have this much new development coming in, it increases the tax base for, for uh, city, and uh, it would certainly, uh, uh, that prevents taxes from going up. I'm a firm believer in getting our additional revenue through new development. And uh, so that is certainly happening, and what's in the hopper and in the books for next year, or this year now, is, is certainly great. So, uh, but it meant a tremendously busy year for councillors and staff. 
<laughs> obviously. And uh, council had meetings morning, noon, and night, or not too many in the morning, but lots of noon meetings, and, uh, and in the evening, and supper time, and everything else, to process this business. And on top of it all, we had to deal with the COVID situation. Yes. So we had a lot of Zoom meetings as well, but we got through it and around it, and uh, the development is taking place. And like I said, this year is going to be uh, probably just as busy, which will be great. Uh, Councilor, or Deputy Mayor McCollum. And uh, Councillor Duran, I just want to thank you for that report, as well as all councillors have. Um, I think uh, sometimes it, it just reminds me that when we individually as councillors receive questions to speak on applications that come forth or who owns the land or who's involved in the project, I think with that amount of money that's being processed annually, and as Mayor has mentioned, the meetings that we have to be involved in, that one of the very first prerequisites for us is that all of those applications are confidential and we're not at liberty to speak to them because that could cause a developer to withdraw from doing business in Summerside if we went and disclosed that information. So um, I know when I get asked those kinds of questions from people, I try to tell them honestly, when it becomes public, then there is a public release and, and that type of communication. But for us, it's something that we're trying to be very transparent, but we have to wait until the business and operations side of it takes place. Thanks for that, though. Thank you, and just in regards to uh, one example is uh, the former Holland College building. I understand, I've been advised the asbestos removers are in there doing the thing, and you'll probably not see too much work outside of the building for a few months, but, uh, and I know, they requested electrical and water hookups to work inside, and I, we were advised that that has been provided, so it's great to see that, but, but come spring, you'll probably see the, the dozers in there removing the building and, and, and uh, be more obvious. So there's so many things behind the scenes that's going on and many large projects right now, you know, in the plans, and some already started. So it's gonna be a great year, and it's gonna be a bu another busy year for council, but thank you. Uh, Councillor Drawn, for your report and for the work of your staff. I will, uh, I'll certainly pass those thanks along to, uh, to the department, for sure. And uh, just, to, just to add on to what people are saying, um, yeah, it's been quite a monumental year in terms of uh, development and, and permits that are taken out. There's some subdivisions that are <coughs> fairly new and we'll certainly be seeing some, uh, I know of one that has all the lots sold, so we'll certainly be seeing some, some building and some permits come out of that. As well, and that'll put the numbers up for uh, going into 2022. So it's a good, uh, it's a good sign for the year starting off like this. I believe Councillor McFeely had your light on. No. Oh. oh. Okay. <laughs> okay. And, and those, uh, yeah. those, uh, yeah, that 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 74 million that you were talking about uh, that you had mentioned for permits last year that didn't include many major projects like the roundabouts and all of the street work and the sidewalk work and the water and sewer work. So those construction jobs uh, were, were great for the economy. So it certainly is a snowball effect and it, it's uh, really rolling and the snowball is still going right into this year. So you have anything further, uh, Councilor uh, Just I just wanted to mention one thing and I'm sure it, it'll, be, uh, it'll be brought up possibly with Councilor McDougall's uh, report. Maybe not this month, but maybe next month when the stats come in. But I know like everyone else uh, after these last couple of weekends, I've been getting, uh, well, reading a lot of compliments just about uh, pretty much how the city's been handling snow removal. And uh, a lot of the times as counselors, we, we hear the complaints come in, especially around winter and, and, and uh, you know, why is my street not done yet, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, a lot of people out there commending, uh, commending the city for the, uh, the effort that they the show they put on the last couple of winter storm events on the snow removal, and it's been it's been very good. People are very appreciative, and just if, if Rob, if you could pass that on to Greg, I know uh, I've been screenshotting everything that I've been seeing and sending it off to you. But uh, just wanted to pass along thanks to uh, municipal services and all the crews, and it's not going unnoticed because residents are uh, they're speaking up. Thank you, Councillor Gron. Uh, I do not see any other speakers lights on, so. Councillor McFeely, uh, your department has been involved in a lot of these de major developments that we had, so 
floor is yours, sir, for a report. Thank you, Your Worship. I have nothing left to report. You guys pretty well covered it all. So. <laughs> Anyways, uh, I just want to thank Mike Tatuska for the, the report, and not only for the report, but for uh, the, the, uh, the, the significant uh, work that he accomplishes with a you know, relatively small staff there in terms of, of uh, bringing economic development projects to the city and you know, some of which uh, I'll report on tonight. The, your Worship, you kind of covered off the Granville Street uh, uh, property, and uh, um, I think it's very public now that uh, the project is undertaken by a flexor out of Halifax, and they've, it's begun in earnest. As, as you said, a lot of stuff is happening inside. You won't see much happening outside. Uh, but the project uh, will be completed uh, uh, by June, so you know, as as winter moves into spring here, we should start to see some significant activity outside. So uh, I think we all agree, and certainly the comments in the community have been, been overwhelmingly positive around around this project. And uh, and the, the exciting part of it is, it's not just Holland College, the old Holland College coming down. Uh, it's the the fact that it'll be home for a new fifty three thousand square foot collaborative health center for the for the city so uh, that should go a long ways in terms of building our health infrastructure in the city and hopefully be a, a critical piece in attracting uh, uh, health care professionals to the city as well so we look forward to that the Sunbank project kicked into high gear over the over the fall months and we are pleased to report things are moving right along Sunbank is Prince Edward Island's largest renewable energy project and has officially begun its uh, physical transformation, transforming an 80-acre well field into a solar and battery clean energy producing asset. Pegged at $68 million in total capital costs, this first in PEI infrastructure project will, be trans will transform the way the citizens and businesses of Summerside receive their energy through clean, renewable, green energy allowing our business and residents to promote their green energy footprint. In late fall 2021, the Sun Sunbank Consortium awarded three tenders for the project development to Aspen, Kent and Associates of Montague PEI, who will have a significant presence in Summerside moving forward. And since then, the project has hit major milestones from project engineering product procurement and land preparation for spring of 2022 construction. Specifically, the team has, uh, has achieved the following milestones. One, all the access roads have been built in order to facilitate the physical deployment of the panels and batteries. Two, all the large equipment has been procured, panels, battery systems, uh, inverters, pilings, and racking for spring summer 2022 delivery. Work to facilitate the integration of all this renewable energy has started at the utility substation. Four, work is beginning on the uh, labor recruitment campaign to assist in filling positions for the development team. And five, planning has begun for a winter community open house to engage the community in, on the project. So I know there's lots of questions out there, so this will be an opportunity for, mm -hmm. for residents to really kind of understand what's going to happen there. And it's, it is a significant achievement uh, and a significant uh, asset for the city. Also, Sunbank is a significant economic de development engine for the community in terms of direct spend in the community as, as a labor and other spin-off benefits pegged an additional 23 million. To date, Sunbank has supported over 10 island-based firms and over $2 million in direct expenditure to bring this project to fruition. Summerside investment, and as Councillor Durand mentioned in his report, and, and, and the mayor certainly, uh, the, the uh, $73 million in investment activity. And I think the exciting part of that is, uh, is that this activity uh, is being driven by all sectors, not just the residential sector, which is very positive. And Summerside's now becoming a, a go-to investment location on the island. These current figures speak volumes to that. We certainly are forecasting a robust 2022 and hope to keep the tradition moving forward on this trajectory. So that is my report, Your Worship. Thank you, Councillor McFeely. Any 
Questions or comments? I, I, Council Ramsey. I do. I do. Um, uh, thank you, Councillor McFeely, for that report. I just want to talk about Granville Street for a second, Holland College, because there's a lot of people that aren't aware that the project is underway because people are inside working, right? And I know you talked about that just kind of briefly, but I just wanted to bring it up again so that folks would know that things are actually happening there. Um, and yeah, uh, we covered that in, in the report that you know things, you know, the work now is all being done inside. It's all inside, you know, exactly. You know, and and they so they really won't see uh, you know the demolition of the exterior part of the structure until sort of winter moves into spring here type of thing. So, exactly. Yeah, so and and I've met a few people that yeah. say, oh, there's nothing going on up there, Barb, and yeah. you know, and I'm saying, well, there is. There's They're lots, just inside, but. On. But yeah. all the folks in Summerside, are, it's just yeah. nice that they're aware of that. Yeah. So thank you for your report, Brian. Thank you, Councillor McFeely. Okay, uh, Councillor McDougall, Municipal Services. Uh, you're not talking about the street sweeper today, are you? No, new street sweeper in order. Uh, hopefully it's here by spring. Uh, so uh, it's hard to believe that, you know, three weeks ago we were bragging about having no snow. And, uh, but uh, just like that, uh, we've had a couple of doozies. And uh, I have a report here by Director Greg Goody from the department. But before I do that, I just want to thank Director Greg and Operations Supervisor Owen McDonald for the great work they do, plus all the staff members. You know, there's uh, the first storm we had here a week or so ago. Never get any complaints, got a few suggestions, but no complaints. This one here, I've had all kinds of uh, compliments on how the, uh, the uh, municipal works have operated and cleaned up our city. And uh, you know, we don't have to go far to, to see what a great job that they do. And I, and I thank all the uh, residents for their patience too, because I, even downtown, it takes, you know, couple of days before we can we can get around to clean and everything there so anyway just wanted to state that and send along our thanks to the department uh, the staff at the sewage treatment uh, plant has performed their uh, major maintenance for the month uh, snow remo removal efforts uh, were completed that were completed from December 13th to January 10th uh, we plowed the roads five times, parking lot five times, street salting seven times, uh, sidewalk salting six times, sidewalk plowing five times, and the downtown uh, core removal, uh, we did that once, and the fire hydrant uh, cleaning was done. Uh, Public Works also continues uh, with, uh, they had to fill in some potholes with the coal patch and we'll do that as needed and uh, had to repair a few sinkholes that were in the right of ways. The uh, uh, Compton Road and Seaweed Road were uh, filled in and graded with millings. And our new salt truck was on the road uh, this month for the salting operations. The new lift station at Reed's Corner is under construction and is expected to be completed by March. And the Holland College demolition project was connected for its required water services. The uh, general operational stats were 32 water samples were taken and all clear of bacteria, 15 chlorination samples uh, taken and all uh, within parameters. Had a number of turn on, turn offs, uh, nine sewer calls for the month, and uh, five water main breaks were repaired this month, and uh, one water service was repaired. There was uh, 444 tons of biofertilizer were created this month at the sewage treatment plant. That is my report, Your Worship. Thank you, uh, Councilor McDougall. Any questions? Any further? Uh, Councilor I do. I have a. I have a, and and it's it's not necessarily a question. And I I just really want to also congratulate Greg and Owen and and all those snowplow drivers and and who salting the roads and removing the snow and. Um, but over that period, I did get uh, contact uh, from one lady who, um, regarding Wedgwood Manor, and I, I'm bringing that up because there were a whole lot of people then uh, 
that chimed in on the conversation and um, it was late in the day and um, they couldn't get the healthcare workers in and they couldn't get them out because Maple wasn't done. Okay. And so it was a matter of a phone call it, it was, and it was done, you know, and I really just think it might have been missed. I hope yeah. that's it, but I yeah. know the hospital is always cleared out, and the Somerset Manor. And depending and on the wind, too, it could have been done and filled right back. Yeah, no, I don't. I don't think yeah. it was because okay. I did talk to Owen uh, okay. Bruce. So, but okay. but anyway, I uh, they were wondering the folks that I was talking with is if we could kind of put that on a priority, like the hospital and the the Somerset Manor, like could Wedgwood be on there too, because you know the healthcare workers need to get in there, and the other ones have to get out and. Uh, so um, we'll I, I just wondered, uh, CAO Rob, if that would be a possibility to, um, I told them I would speak to council about it yeah. and if everybody is we in can agreement talk to with Greg that. And, and, uh, and Owen yeah. and okay. wonderful. Okay. okay. Thank, thank, you. thank you very much, Bruce. Okay. Thank you. Any other? I do not see any other lights on. The floor Your is still yours. The only uh, other thing I have is I uh, want to send condolences out to the family of uh, Vicki Curley. Vicki McGregor Curley. Yes. Uh, she was a great friend and a uh, longtime resident of St. Eleanor's and uh, died way too young. So, Thank uh, you. sincere condolences to Lowell and family. We did, we did send a message out to him earlier. Anyway, any further comments on that, on uh, your report? Or, okay, uh, Councillor Campbell, how are things with all this wind in your wind farm? Wind farm is down, Your Worship. We got two of the turbines are not communicating with the system, and two need to be looked at by Vestas before restarting, which should happen today, but I don't think it did. Probably the weather is certainly not cooperating. Uh, temporary power is being hooked up for the Sunbank job trailer. Everybody's talking about Sunbank, and that, I'd have to mention that there was a resolution made last week for. Uh, a million, over a million dollars for a purchase of steel and aluminum from uh, MSE on off of uh, uh, yeah for the structure structure tender for SAC that's McDougal Steel, which is certainly help for our local economy. Sure. Temporary electrical needs for the Hall and College demolition is completed, so we get water into them that are working. And I guess I'll get in on the sing song and say what the notable projects for 2021. We've done the wiring in the Pope and Central Traffic Circuit, which are, I haven't heard a bad word about it yet. And most people are, or a lot of people are intimidated, older people with, with traffic circles and stuff like that. And there isn't a problem at all up there. And we had the Ocean View Spa, Economic Development Park. Starlight Subdivision, Acadia Bernard Avenue Extension, Granville Street South Voltage Conservation, Maple Avenue Pole and Cable Replacement. And we replaced 114 poles this year. Nearly 200 new upgrade service conditions. So we average about 10 or more new customers a month. Repaired boardwalk lights behind the journal for Councillor McDougal. 47% of our electricity came from the wind in December, which is good. What percentage was it? 47. Pretty good. And the generator run hours was 39.7. If you listen to my reports, I think they're mostly around 8 to 10 hours. But this one was uh, 39.7 hours for the generator because we ran to support load up to Western PER. Maritime Electric had trouble with the transformer in Sherwood that was leaking oil. 11 new electric customers energized this month, 13 electrical service upgrades, nine new poles were installed and one removed, five transformers were installed. And if you listen to the Deputy Mayor's report, financial report, there was a surplus of over $100,000 to the city because of the operating results of the Electrical department, which I have to thank Greg Goody for and, and Councillor Campbell. Thank you.
Thank you, Councillor Campbell. Any questions for the chair of the electrical? I know it's going to be a busy year with your solar system getting hooked up. And I, I just had one, and this uh, this pertains to uh, Councillor Duran's ward too. But there's a line that runs through. Uh, Ward 2 and it also involves Ward 1 over in Darby Drive and they continuously have power outages on that and I know on McDougal Drive they've, they've had a number and uh, I, I'm just not sure what, what the issue is but we've been having it for a long time and I thought we had the issue solved but I just wanted to pass that along again that it's been... Okay. Oh, okay. Okay, that's great. And the other thing that I wanted to mention was uh, the uh, the new roundabout. My mother-in-law is 93 and uh, still drives, and she said that's the slickest thing that we ever did there. So, yeah. So. Thank you, uh, Council McDougall. Did your was your light on, uh, Deputy Mayor? No, I'm I can't see your mic. To, I just there. I was just going to say something to Councillor. Um, Campbell just to joke a little but since the electric committee and your report is doing so well maybe you can uh, do something to help those people that are on maritime electric get their electric uh, under under the service that you represent they, they'd love to be under the service I'm sure I think you probably get unanimous support in here for that and speaking of maritime electric I understand that uh, are they looking for another raise so I'm not sure where that is in the mix. If anybody knows where it is, or are they, are they thinking about it, or did they apply for it, or are they waiting for Iraq to get back to them with an, an answer? Yeah, they've, applied. they've applied. Okay, so I think uh, uh, come budget time, maybe we'll be in that discussion, but just so everybody knows, uh, I think everybody knows from the last time where we stand on that, but uh, well, I'm not sure if they have to come back to council. if. If uh, council is going to follow their, if they get ruled in favor of an increase, do we have to come back again, or is that resolution that was passed last year, or was that for one year, or do we? I, I think it should come back to council again if if there's a request to raise their rates if it's approved, and and to see if council wants to follow them. Oh, it's okay. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Campbell, for your report, and uh, keep up the good work there. So we're going to move on to police services, fire emergency planning. Councillor Ramsey, the floor is huge. yours. You have a report plus a resolution. I do. Thank you, Your Worship, and uh, good evening, everyone. <coughs> and um, <laughs> we got dug out. Oh, my goodness. I think I've shoveled so much snow in all my life. But anyway, we're here. <laughs> So I'm going to do December's uh, police report, committee and volunteer work. The, the police service held their annual Cops for Christmas program at the Cup in December in conjunction with Salvation Army. The event was a huge success with a large quantity of toys and money being donated. It was a wonderful event. Lots of folks around, everybody masking and, and making sure we were all safe, but uh, most counselors came in and uh, it was it was a lovely it was a lovely morning. Thank you to Summerside Police Services for that event. Um, members continue to attend meetings for the Bridge Program, Criminal Intelligence (PEI), Crime Stoppers, and other provincial organizations. Training um, during the month of December, Constable Daly attended a pistol instructor's course at Academy, Poli um, Academy Police. Uh, um, a number of members received their uh, annual taser training and standard field sobriety training, and two members took a phase inter um, interviewing course through the RCMP. Community police activities. Constable Mallory Metallic has taken on the role of being the service representative with the MCPEI Indigenous Justice Advisory Committee. Um, thanks, Mallory, for that. A plan has been implemented because of the rise in COVID-19 cases to ensure that we have staff to continue service 
to the community in the, in the event of an infection. Some staff are working from home and our MCU and JFO members um, will be used to take over patrol duties in the event of an outbreak. Um, also, the staff that are working at home are trained to take on dispatch duties. Arrangements have been made for RCMP or Charlottetown Police to take over dis dispatch duties if our dispatch has to be shut down because of COVID-19. Hopefully we can make it through this wave without implementing the plan. It's nice to see that they have a plan in place. And, uh, uh, the following is a list of some occurrences um, uh, totals for the month of December. And what they do is now they're doing it for a three-month uh, period. So if folks want to go online to compare what I read off tonight with what happened in October and November, then, then feel free to do that. I won't read all those numbers. I'm just going to go over what happened in December. So the calls for service were 561. Traffic accidents were 32. Reported crimes of assault and thefts were 39, which is up quite a bit. Theft reports were 45, which is up a lot. Impaired driving offenses were eight. Highway traffic act charges were 57. And last month they were 53, and the month before they were 183. So they're short-staffed over there. So they're not able to do the traffic control like they were doing. They hope to get that back in order, but right now that's not what's happening. So that's why the number is lower. Break and enter reports, business and residential were nine and drug enforcement charges were five and that's way up. Last month was two and the month before was one. So they're, they're, being, um, they're being very busy over there and I'd like to thank them. If anyone has any questions on this report that I can't answer, you can um, talk to Sin Chief, uh, Acting Chief Sinclair Walker. But, so I'm open for questions if anyone has any. No questions, nope. but I uh, talked with uh, the police chief, uh, usually stop by every couple of days to say hello to him and he's doing very well. He's doing very he's well. He's getting used to the, this uh, new walking system. And, yeah. uh, he's, uh, he's, he's out of the hospital. Well. He's home and out of the hospital, uh, yes, Mayor. Yeah. Yes, yeah. So that's that's uh, kudos to our chief, and hopefully he can get back in with the program here very soon. So, so thanks to your police department and your fire department for the, the good work they do. Oh my goodness! Over this last couple of weekends, and uh, absolutely, yeah. So that's police report. I'll go into the fire report if if there's no more questions. Um, December 21, uh, 2021 report, there were 14 fire calls during the month of December. There was a structure fire, two medical first responder calls, a motor vehicle accident, an electrical fire, a false alarm, a site smell of smoke, a flu fire, carbon monoxide call, a miscellaneous call, and four cancel calls. Firefighters trained for a total of 161.5 hours in the following activities during the month of December. Winter checklists, Athena School fire prevention, level one hazmat training, hydrant pump ladder work, fitness, and occupational health and safety inspection. Firefighters are back to cohort training and Zoom meetings until the newest restrictions are relaxed. Fire Chief Edmund had the privilege of escorting Dr. Morrison and Santa Claus <laughs> to the Prince uh, County Hospital for a brief visit with residents. And I think uh, Dr. Morrison and Santa Claus came in on a helicopter. And so it was just a surprise visit, but the chief knew, and so he went up and did the escort, and uh, yeah. Our fire services will be advertising for new recruits during the month of January, so anyone interested? Um, and I know I've been sharing that on Facebook as well as other, as well as other councillors and the mayor, and I'm sure. Station one, station one in Summerside will be the host of level one training during the upcoming months. Um, respectively, uh, Ken Culleton, thank you Ken for this report. And if there are any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. I do not see any question marks. Okay, all right. Thank you. I'll move right into the emergency measures operations uh, report January 17th, 2022. 
As part of its ongoing emergency preparedness efforts, the city and all municipalities are required to submit an, approval, an approved emergency response plan to the province. Tonight, I am seeking council's formal endorsement of the plan. It was developed many years ago, but has been refined over time to reflect changes in our response practice, reception centers, and partnerships that we have developed and or strengthened, especially over the last couple of years. This plan has also been reviewed by the provincial EMO for their advice and endorsement. Like any plan, we will continue to refine it as new information and best practices come available. So I'm going to now read the resolution. Um, resolution COS 22-002, January 17, 2022, moved by myself, Barb Ramsey, seconded by Councillor Norma McCollman. Whereas the health and safety of residents is of the utmost priority of the city of Summerside, and whereas the city is required under section 145 of the Municipal Government Act to prepare a plan to respond to any emergency situation that put residents' health and safety at risk. And whereas the city has developed this plan in consultation with provincial and community partners and consistently reviews this plan to ensure it reflects best practices in emergency response. And whereas the chief administrative officer is the municipal emergency management coordinator for the city of Summerside, be it resolved that city council endorses the emergency response plan. This bears the recommendation of the committee of the whole meeting on January 11, 2022. Thank you. Moved by Councilor Ramsey and seconded by Deputy Mayor McCollman. The resolution's on the floor. Any questions and or comments? Do not see any speaker lights on, so all in favor say aye. 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 Contrary nay, carried unanimously. Thank, thank you, you very much, Your Worship. And thank you and your committee for the work that was done mm -hmm. on this emergency plan. I know we've been working on it for a number of months. And uh, just months. back a couple of years, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I thank our CAO and staff mm -hmm. and our police chiefs and fire chiefs and all department heads. Oh. Mm -hmm. All directors, I guess, is the official title, for the work to have this in place, and uh, and uh, we all feel very comfortable that uh, if an emergency was to take place, the plan is well, in place to deal with it, and uh, we thank uh, everybody involved in getting this and getting it off to the province. And we know if there is an emergency, the province is there to assist, and our, and we have a number of organizations around the city who have volunteered to step forward if required, and all these kinds of things. That's I know it's right. quite a package. It's quite but, a package. Uh, a lot of work to get it tied together. Mm -hmm. because, thank you. Uh, Deputy Mayor McCollum. Well, I just also, uh, just to echo, uh, to thank our CAO, Rob Philpot for leading this, this process because it was something that really needed, you know, to go through some updating of names and contacts. And also, I think one of the things that really I think is a good thing to know when we did the provincial table scenario exercises. I think their representatives were really uh, pleased with with the outlay of all of the work that has been you know, pulled together for Summerside. So that's kind of a nice feeling to know about. It sure is, and and I would like to thank uh, CAO Rob uh, Philpot for the tremendous amount of work that you've done on this project and um, it was a pleasure working beside you and uh, Deputy Mayor, thank you for your involvement in this and the community folks who who stepped up and who really want to be part of Summerside and really want to want to help us out if we do happen to get into a situation and that's pretty special. We have a pretty special little city here. So anyway, and, and Council for all your support through listening to us and supporting us and giving us uh, the direction that we need to, you know, in case of an emergency that we're, we're well prepared. And uh, so thank you, everybody. Thank you, Councillor Ramsey, for that. And uh, we'll continue, uh, continue on here. I thought you were going to ask a question, but you're just getting prepared uh, to give your report. We'll turn it over to Community Services Chair, Councillor Corey Snow. We have a report after a busy start. 
Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, I'd like, just like to start by thanking uh, Director J.P. DeRoger, who compiled the report. Uh, December was an exciting month in the Community Service Department, starting with the highly anticipated inflation of the dome at Credit Union Place. There was plenty of excitement around the inflation, as many residents stopped by to spectate the bubble going up. Crews have now switched their focus to the interior construction of the welcome building and the lighting inside the dome. Uh, just on a side note to that, uh, we've all noticed the winds here the last few weeks, and i got to be honest to say I was a little bit nervous uh, not knowing what would happen when the dome got the winds that we have the right now as we stand here They're howling outside, but it's held up really well and 100 plus kilometer hour winds and we know we we have a good dome there, so uh, Santa made his annual tour of Summerside over two nights in December as he visited neighborhood neighborhoods throughout the city Staff also created a Santa sleigh tracker so residents could keep updated on his whereabouts once again, plenty of residents got outdoors to welcome Santa to Summerside. There was a lot of on sale, a lot of things on sale at the beginning of the month of uh, December with the Fred Page Cup tournament packages, blue rodeo tickets, and the 10 for 10 all access passes all going on sale for the holiday season. The Fred Page Cup tournament package were the perfect stocking stuffer with the inclusion of the Fred Page Cup themed mini stick and commemorative ticket and have seen great interest. The always popular 10 for 10 access passes, facility gift cards offered residents another great stocking stuffer along with tickets to Blue Rodeo and Jan Arden. I know I'm looking forward to seeing some Blue Rodeo. Mm -hmm. uh, the Active Living crew announced Active Winter and over 30 days of programming throughout the winter months, from snowshoe and skiing, hiking, fat biking, tobogganing, shinny hockey, indoor and outdoor skating, and more. Active Winter offers residents plenty to do outdoors during the winter months. The Parks and Green Space crew announced the adoption of a woodlot management program for Rotary Park in partnership with the province, Rotary Club of Summerside, and the City of Summerside. This woodlot management program will focus on forest fire prevention, wildlife management, invasive, invasive plant species management, oh, that's a tough one, silviculture, and most importantly, tree planting and regrowth. The park has, split, has been split into 12 area stands with crews starting to mobilize the first in early January. So you'll see people in there doing some tree cutting and trimming. Uh, so for the public to be aware that uh, that's ongoing work that needs to be done for the safety of the uh, woodlot. Um, I was up there snowshoeing uh, just yesterday, right after the storm and uh, uh, they were in there already getting the trails ready and clearing it and I mean, our roads were clear lucky enough, but for them to be in there that early getting it ready, it's just such a, a great asset we have in our city and uh, the, it's well taken care of. So, uh, Lastly, the bowling lanes and the aquatic center saw 17 total themed birthday parties for the month of December, while the veteran Consen Veterans Convention Center saw a total of 40 bookings in the month of December. So uh, that's my report, Your Worship. If there's any questions. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> Councillor Snow, we have a couple of lights on here, Councillor Drown, or <laughs> Councillor Drown and Councillor Ramsey. Thank you. And I, and I think Councillor Campbell. Thank you. Go ahead. Thanks, Your Worship. Um, just a question with respect, and it might be too early to, to know, but with respect to the uh, rental fees uh, for the dome, um, will those go up with inflation? <laughs> That's a good one. Uh, oh, <laughs> stick <laughs> Oh my lord! That's all I got. Thanks. <laughs> I'll I'll show a, myself out. Bad right dad joke. Oh. Oh. Ah. <laughs> I just have a. Oh. I just have a quick question, Your Worship. Um, and your and every every. I'm sorry, but it seems I have lots to say tonight. But I have been taking my grandsons to the cup almost daily for skating. And I wanted everybody to know that all day long, you can go skating for free. You just pick an hour, you book your time, and uh, you know it's just a wonderful. And, and I'm, I'm Charlotte. I, I, I met some people the other day when I was there from Charlottetown who actually came down from Charlottetown to Summerside and said, like, this is just awesome. They had their grandson with them, and they said. We just don't get to do this. It's not free, you know. We can we can come in here. The little boy was on the ice for three hours. The grandmother said, 
He's been on there for three hours. So anyway, I just want people to know that with the kids not being in school, I say to the boys when I have them, my little grandsons, this is your recess, and we're going to the cup, and we're gonna and we're gonna go skating. So and anyway, it's just that easy, and it's free, and it's wonderful. So I just wanted to say thank you for that. No, and thank thanks for mentioning that, Barb, because I think a lot of times people don't realize how much free activities we do have throughout the city, yeah. whether or not it's, you know, skating or you can go rent snowshoes for free. free, you can get fat bikes for free, you get, there's skates there if you don't own a pair of skates, yeah. there's lots of chances to get out and get active. Helmets and, too. Yeah, and, ra and right now with COVID going on, we need every opportunity we can to get out and get active yeah. and, yeah. and with kids being uh, homeschooled or parents having to teach now for this next little bit, it's important that they yeah. uh, have that way to get out and get out. And your speakers on, so just let them know that you can get um, helmets and skates. Yeah, no, free. they they have every, absolutely everything there: skates, helmets, snowshoes, fat bikes, you name it. We have it to rent, and 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 it's important to note the public library too also has stuff that uh, you can rent there. They they do snowshoes and a bunch right. of stuff. So it's, there's lots of stuff you can do if you really want. Thank you, oh. Councillor Ramsey. I believe Councillor Campbell, you had a comment. Oh yeah. Like, Comment, I guess I'd like to thank Councillor Snow for not just uh, head of the department, but actually I've seen him up at Rotary Park and he was up there yesterday and hot chocolate's on if you want to come up. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. But uh, the people on Collin Avenue are certainly tickled to death over the Woodlock Management Program that's going to take place up there. Uh, I never really noticed until they mentioned that we're getting that done up there how many trees we lost during that hurricane, it was certainly made quite a mess. In uh, Bluebell Park, uh, we've got a uh, big sign out front now and uh, playground equipment, so most of it's in, I think. It's already been ordered. But I would also ask Councillor Snow if maybe he could invite us for a trip to the Dome as a group. Yeah, yeah I, no, I've had a lot of questions. So. No, no, for sure. I, I can tell you, I've uh, sort of been fortunate enough that I've been inside the dome uh, early. We had an interview there with CBC early on. I was in there, and it, it's absolutely amazing. So for anybody that hasn't been in there, it's it's a real spectacle. It's it's going to be something that our city is going to be really proud of, and other uh, neighboring uh, communities are going to be uh, wanting to come and use our facility like they do everything else, and, and, and we'll welcome everybody. If there's people working there, that might be better to have an organized tour sort of thing. Yep, yep, for sure. Maybe somebody's. Yep, we'll 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 get you in. Thank you. Thank you, I, uh, Councillor Adams. Oh no, I'm just right. Oh, sorry. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Cor Councillor Corey, just one thing. Um, when you mentioned like all of the activities, I know people do comment on that. So, I know I'm hoping at budget time that we can look at doing some things downtown to get our downtown as attractive as Charlottetown so that we'll get more people coming up here during Christmas with the lighting and the archways and things like that because we've got a great community. I, I, I guess I'll leave it at, uh, I know I have have been having some discussions with uh, Director JP over uh, possible activities uh, for the city and uh, I guess as we get to budget we'll work on that but there's definitely some interesting ideas coming forward. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Adams, the floor is yours. You have a report on legal affairs, culture, policy, and bylaw review committee. Yes. Thank you, Your Worship. Human Resources. Um, okay. Thank you, everybody. Um, the Human Resource Legal Affairs, um, just a couple points there. Stephen DeRosh was a successful applicant for the labor semi skilled position with Municipal Works. And competitions are open for an assistant electrical engineer electrical engineering intern and summer engineering student. So those three um, are open now. Do we have any questions on that? I'll run into the culture part. Um, recent progress with the Summerside Armory project includes new front step and entrance walkways, sod, seed, and currently working on the install of further exhibit cases on the main level and the finishing details. The remaining outdoor step down to the sidewalk at the front of the building, handrails and stonework will be completed when the weather is suitable. And just something to note, there is 
um, in the basement, there is a meeting room there. So that's going to be able to be rented. And I think Lori said, was it 10 or 12 people could probably put yeah, down there? So. Yeah. Maybe not as many not right now with yeah. COVID, but yeah. Um, yeah, there is like a little area down there and it's, mm. it's pretty nice and set off by itself. Uh, Culture Summerside is currently exploring delivery options, upcoming 2022 programming, such as Flag Day, Heritage Culture Wars, Mayor's Heritage Tea, Summerside Lobster Carnival, and the Old Fashioned Carnival. Uh, deadlines are being met in the area of grant writing. Proposals and reports are being submitted to government organizations pertaining to summer students, past programming and proposed programming for the summer, and fall and winter of 22-23. Um, recently received collections management grant from the Community Museums Association of PEI to further the work in the intellectual and physical order of artifacts. Um, have received five grants from the reopening fund for heritage organizations. And that's COVID fund, right? That's COVID fund, yeah. Um, one for each of the heritage sites. And Lighting the Way, the story of Summerside Electric, 1920 to 2020, continues to sell and can be purchased at Summerside City Hall, the Fergie Cultural Center, the Bookmark in Charlottetown, and will soon be available at Coles in Summerside. Further retail locations may be sought as needed. Any questions, anybody? Keep going into bylaw policy review. Um, just I like have to a bring couple of questions, but sorry, oh, yeah. I'll sorry. wait till you're finished. Correct. But just in regards to a couple of things. Okay. Um, uh, I'd like to bring everyone up to date on the latest efforts of the bylaw policy review committee. At Council's December monthly meeting, a vaccination policy was adopted by Council. We believe the policy strikes a balance between the rights of those who are fully vaccinated with those that are not. As a refresher, some of the key points of the proposed policy include, uh, first off, all staff must provide proof of their current vaccination status on or before February 28, 2022. Um, another point is any unvaccinated staff must provide a negative COVID-19 test from a provincially run government facility, testing facility once a week or at seven day intervals and at any other times as may be required by the employer, which will not be more than three times per week. I do have a question, Rob, is that over and above say if there was like a little out break or if there was a close contact and everybody had to go is that over and above that that is okay because I know we'll probably be asked so <laughs> um, and an employee who has indicated they they intend to become fully vaccinated but who does not become fully vaccinated in accordance with the schedule of vaccinations provided may be subject to discipline up to and including termination of employment we will continue to monitor this issue closely as we know public health guidance can change in the meantime, we intend to more formally acknowledge those who have received the vaccine while continuing to work with those staff who are vaccine hesitant. The health and safety of our staff and our residents is our utmost priority. While the community continues to um, its work on the unsightly properties file, we are interested in hearing from our colleagues on any other areas that we should focus on in 2022. Most of the city's bylaws have been updated, uh, but are always interested in hearing from council about ideas on how to do business better. And that's my report. Thank you. you Is that all you have there then? Yeah, that's it. So, uh, just a couple of questions. Uh, uh, I know there's some discussion in regards to the governor's plate race week in the lobster carnival. Mm -hmm. I don't know if the lobster carnival sort of comes under your department, uh, but uh, I understand racing PEI, <coughs> Harness Racing PEI may be trying to change the date of the big race, the Governor's Plate race, and uh, it may not uh, be coincide with our Lobster Carnival. And I think I think if that happens, it's going to be difficult uh, for the carnival because it uh, has been for many years always been the sort of the, the grand finale of the Lobster Carnival. I'm not sure where it is in the mix. I know uh, maybe uh, Mr. Philpot may have some information on it, but I think now that I'm being optimistic here that hopefully we'll be getting COVID behind us this year. And I think we've been talking about trying to get the lobster carnival back on track where, like it used to be with some changes. And I'd like to see it longer than two or three days. Uh, so, but to, uh, to have this happen, I'm not sure where it is in the mix, but we'll be following it up this week to have the dates changed so it will be convenient for somebody else, another organization, uh, 
it, it, it's not easy to book, uh, to book the, the, the race or the, um, the, the equipment that they use for carnival. And uh, so, because they're booked in year in advance, usually for whatever municipality or wherever they're going. And uh, with this, I would say, would be short notice right now to try to get uh, the midway booked when it, they're already committed to someplace else. But we'll keep working on that this week and see what we can find out. But I'd like to see the carnival extended another day or two to, to, get, to rebuild it, and uh, like they do in the Shady Acts and the Charlottetowns and other places, because it is a, and has been a major function in the city. So we'll see what we can find out about the racing situation and uh, see how it goes this week. Uh, did you have anything further on that, uh, uh, Mr. Philpott, regarding uh, the possibility of the changing of the dates? Uh, you have the same, oh, sorry. You have the same information that I do, so uh, we're going to follow up this week to see where things are in terms of the scheduling. And I'll sort of look at your idea of maybe extending it by a day or two. Right? Yes. Yep. Okay. Thank you, uh, Mr. Philpott. Uh, anything further? Any questions? Uh, Councilor Adams, you're yeah. finished there. So I guess it would appear that we've gotten to the end of the agenda. And just before I ask for a motion to adjourn, I just want to make a couple other comments. Uh, so I certainly want to wish everybody a healthy new year. And I had mentioned COVID there a while ago. And I want to thank the staff and councillors for, you know, trying to follow the, the regulations for the provincial health uh, 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 Dr. Morrison and their great work and to uh, keep staff informed and uh, thank the staff for their great work over the past uh, number of months, I guess we could say, maybe a year now, a couple of years, on uh, trying to make sure everybody is, is kept safe. And uh, uh, I believe you had mentioned, uh, I think I did mention the Rotary Park. Somebody was talking about that. I remember 15 years ago, or help me with the date that Rotary Park was established. It would be 15 years. And uh, it is a, a tremendous uh, a park right within the city of Summerside and, and the council at the time unanimous, unanimously supported w working with Rotary to get the park established. And uh, so uh, it, it, it is great to see that uh, it's been looked after and uh, all of the dead trees um, being removed and, and kept up. And uh, Councillor Campbell, I guess it's in your ward, so thank you for your push on that too. So we've gotten to the end of the agenda, and uh, is there a motion to adjourn? We have two movers, Councillor McFeely and moved and seconded by Councillor McDougall. All in favor? Thank you. Brian is gonna get us disconnected from YouTube there. Just take